Hi, this is History with Andrew Allen, and today's the introduction to my series on the Mexican Revolution. Porfiro Diaz had ruled Mexico for 34 years when the revolt began in November 1910. While Mexico had prospered greatly during that time, at least on paper, most Mexicans had not shared in that prosperity. Still, aside from a few massacres of striking workers, Mexico was peaceful and stable. So, why was there a revolution? Well, Diaz was 80 years old and had zero interest in retiring or taking part in a fair election, which he knew he would probably lose. Given his age and his refusal to name a successor, it should not be a surprise that someone decided to force him into retirement. But no one expected a bloody revolution, especially Francisco Madero, the unexpected victor, who wanted a calm, orderly revolt. Instead, the revolution lasted for 10 years and the United States invaded twice during the presidency of Woodrow Wilson, even though he repeatedly claimed to hate war. The revolution is also famous for the Zimmerman telegram, where the foreign minister of Germany offered Mexico, California, Arizona, and New Mexico if it invaded the United States, which helped motivate the United States to enter World War I. Aside from Emiliano Zapata's agrarian ideology, the Mexican Revolution was not an ideological struggle. Unlike the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution, few Mexican rebels wanted to overturn society. Most of the conflict was driven by the fact that there was only one presidential chair, but numerous people who hoped to sit in it. Even those rebel leaders who did not want to sit in the chair did not want to listen to whoever did manage to sit in the chair. If ideology was not the problem, then why was the revolution so bloody? The short answer is that Madero was fundamentally incapable of resolving the issues that had driven people to risk their lives and overthrow the dictatorship. Actually, the Mexican Revolution was a series of revolts, a conservative coup, a revolt against a new dictator, a civil war between the two main rebel factions, and then another revolt. Along the way, there were other minor revolts. Basically, no one had complete control over Mexico until Alvaro Obregón's victory in 1920, although it would be more accurate to state that the revolution ended when Pancho Villa accepted an amnesty. By that time, almost all all of the original rebels were dead. I will explain how Diaz became the dictator of Mexico in episode 1. Thanks for listening.